Hey guys, I have with me my most favorite person, Greg Zanfardino. Uh, Greg is the only one in the world that is able to uh, teach the Linden Technique. He's the only one that has certification to do that. Um, there are other posers out there and you know who you are. So stop teaching it. Mm -hmm. Greg's the only one that's supposed to do that. So um, this is going to be uh, just a talk with me and my favorite person <laughs> who teaches um, every day, pretty much. Um, but Greg has had a, a beautiful life uh, producing, you know, he runs a management company. So Greg, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, let's see, you and I first encountered each other back when I was in Florida, in Miami, working for a small um, cable company way back in the day. And that company um, was like a niche kind of uh, cable company just emerging. This was like Showtime was a teeny tiny baby. Uh, Showtime was a teeny tiny baby. HBO was like the only streamer out there. So we uh, used to go out to try to find product to launch our our uh, network with. So we found a really huge project and uh, we used it to launch the network and it caught a lot of attention. And um, then uh, the uh, American rights to that show was purchased by a, by Showtime. And then that really helped build Showtime to be who they are today. So when that all happened, uh, the company- What was the name of the product? It was uh, Queer as Folk, which was, oh, a, no. <laughs> the, was yeah. the original British Queer as Folk. We wanted to find something different and fresh and new. And this was back back in the day. And there was nothing like Huge that. Hit. Huge hit. Yeah. But it caught a lot of attention. Um, then Showtime needed something to boost them up. So they approached us to buy all of the uh, um, uh, American, because uh, we had the original British version of it. And uh, there were two seasons of that, but they wanted to uh, rework it for an American version to launch, to build up their network. So they did, they recast the whole thing, but they shot the exact scripts that that we had done for the original British version and then took it on farther. And so that was that history. So when that happened, I uh, went out on producing on my own. And that's how I met Amy because she had uh, the Odessa project and I had seen her short and I thought, oh, God, this is an amazing director. It's amazing story. Every and when I found out that she wrote it, she produced it, she directed it, she shot it, she starred in it. I mean, it was amazing. So that's that's what drew me to Amy, and we started our business relationship back there. And that was twenty seven years ago, maybe. Yeah, uh, something like that. Yeah, yeah. It was it was a while ago. Yeah. And then uh, so then we were working on developing that into something larger, and um, then I think the course of events was. Uh, yes, I had an opportunity to work for Paramount Pictures and or Universal Studios. So I moved from Florida to California. And I'll never forget that because you were the first like person I knew here. And uh, you took me all around the different parts of town so I can help decide where I want to live. And you said, this is this and this is that. And this is, you just educated me. And so then uh, then that started our, our uh, really grew our friendship, but then our business relationship grew even stronger. So just to kind of scoot along faster, um, I ended up going with Paramount Pictures and I worked for them like eight, nine years in many different departments. And, and, um, and then through that process though, um, I had an opportunity to help build out a management company. And it was somebody that I met on the Paramount studio a lot who had a business and he used to manage agents and producers and managers, excuse me, agents and producers and showrunners. And so he had said, look, I'm interested in building out a um, theatrical division. Well, I didn't know much about it at the time. And so then I remember speaking to Amy going, you know, I really want to get into management and learn management because I want to learn management. And you introduced me to a fantastic yeah, manager. Helen Holler and right. So she took me under her wing and she educated me and taught me uh, everything that I knew. And um, and so through the course of events, um, I had an opportunity to take, uh, you know, to help grow this other management company. And, and Sharon gave me her blessings and off I went and worked with uh, this other gentleman for building out his company. And then he was scooped up by a large financial company because to handle the finances, because he was great with contracts and working out deals for um, 
uh, actors, uh, you know, for the entertainment industry. And in, in order for him to do that, he needed to leave the company that he owned. And so he asked me, would you like to, sell, to to buy and take it over, which I did. So that's how I attained that company, you know, changed the name. And over the years, it's grown. And so I have the management company. But now just to tie it back to you, when I had the management company, you know, since I knew Amy all those years, I would send all of my clients to Amy for uh, for the class and used that was what Mondays and Wednesdays you used to have it at the theater and so I used to go every Monday and Wednesday to support my uh, uh, clients and also to scout new talent because they would come in the door uh, knowing nothing they got and some after, really great people from and, af yeah. and after months they'd become like amazing actors and so I, I was there to just sign them right away um, and I still have uh, like one person from way back then that's still on my roster and she's still the best for us. All right. So um, then I think over a period of time being sitting in well, there all the time. Because you were sitting in for so long that you were probably the most qualified because you had sat in on so many classes that you understood the technique. And I think I had you... A couple of times, yeah, you were you went away on a vacation or something. And I yeah, took yeah, over. and you would take over, yeah, and then and then it's moved into now. Greg has his own classes and and he's private coaching and yeah, yeah. And the way that that kind of worked was that um, and then you would also have me speak to them about the management side of business, which was mm -hmm. great because they had someone telling them the really the way it was, you know, for managers and agents. Um, but then. Um, I mean, I fell in love with the technique. I saw how amazing it was for the actors and how, so I made a big decision and we had a, a talk back then about really kind of joining forces more and me working more in that aspect. So I brought my roster down from a really large roster to like four people. So I kept those four people that really didn't need a lot of work, but needed to have the connection to the industry for the jobs. Anyhow, and so that's when I started devoting all my time to working with you and coaching the people you send to me and uh so yeah, now you I, brought on but you brought on a manager yeah, and right. so your roster went back up didn't it I yeah mean, so that's what i did was so the company had been around for a long time had a great reputation i i knew inside my heart i didn't want to let it go but i didn't want to not coach and do the linen technique anymore because that's where a big part of my heart was so i thought let me try to find some people to work the company and so you know did a few people and found one amazing person jen lewis and she's been with me a couple of years now she handles the front end of the business you know getting the clients the auditions getting it set up all that stuff and i have a small part at the back end collecting closing the deals those types of things but yeah but you're still scouting you just signed two of my people from from class oh so you're you're still scouting you're finding oh, good people oh. everywhere oh yeah you gotta act quick because when <laughs> They're good. Everybody seems to know it and they want them. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. So we just signed two more people. We're really excited. And I don't know if you know this, but we just signed uh, Taylor and she just she, she turned in her first uh, theatrical audition yesterday for a feature. Oh, that's fantastic. How yeah. did, it look? did it look great? It was amazing. It was amazing. She, so, she's so good. Yeah. Yeah. So Jen watched it and, and she's, I mean, she sent her all this. We're very happy that we have her. She's amazing. You, you create, but you and the linen technique creates just amazing actors there's it's just hands down there's nothing like it in the world so and here we are today so yeah. uh, the majority of my day life and energy is working the linda technique working with the clients that you send your way and building you know uh their uh, careers and then of course when i work with them and that you send them to me and sometimes i sign them because they're really different yeah i mean i talk to people all the time they're like well i'm not i'm not ready for you yet i'm like a quarter of my series regulars have no other training than the Linden technique. So everybody's ready for me. Everybody's ready for the technique. And if they're not ready to go in the master class, they go to Greg and, and Greg trains you. You know, I think the, the best part of the technique is what you said earlier. It turns out great actors. When people sit in on my class, I have had um, uh, a lot of uh, industry people sit in, they're blown away about, by the, the caliber of talent. And I think so much has to do with the way that they're breaking down their script and the way that they're telling the best story and, and finding their emotions and what's actually important when you get a scene, you know? Yeah. Um, 
and I, we work great together because we do say the same thing. We say it in different ways. We have our own way of going about it. You know, my class has a little bit more time to spend with people. But like, just for example, I understand that Nick hit, hit it out of the park again in class. And, it, and because he was getting so far, and then I work with him a little bit to kind of reinforce some things that you've been telling him, but just in a different way. And now it's clicking and now he's back in, in, in your class and he's kicking butt. Yeah, yeah, it's really quite amazing. But let's talk about the technique. So absolutely. Yeah. Um, so for me, what I have found is that, yes, uh, there's many ways to come at a script. Uh, you don't need to do the 15 guidelines in a row. You can do it in any order and everybody has their own order that's best for them. But it's mostly to make sure that you do all 15. And don't you notice um, when somebody doesn't do one of the guidelines, you could pick it out like just immediately. Immediately, right off the bat. I know, it's and crazy. Then, and then when you fix that one, everything else starts Everything to fall. else fixed. It's like a back adjustment. It's mm -hmm. like and it all falls into place like somebody left out this parenthetical i said did you even look up what that meant they're like no i looked up the other one i'm like you gotta look up all of them you know it's like uh, to not look up what what exasperated means i mean if it's insane writer, it's insane. It, yeah, if a writer's going to spend time to write exasperated in a parenthetical, then you better know what exasperated means. Yeah, I mean, those are golden nuggets they're giving you. Why would you walk right past them? Put it in your you know, your basket and take them to the bank. I totally agree because your competition, they don't know what exasperated means because they didn't look it up either. Like that yeah. guy fell into, I would say, the 95%. Yeah, and you know, because periodically I'll sit down on the master class or go into the actors club. And uh, what am I always saying all the time when you when I'm giving my feedback is you have to do all of the guidelines every time, whether it's one page scene or a five thousand page scene. You have to because they they self correct themselves. They make sure that everything is there. And it's funny. I always use the 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 example of if you go on a plane, you're going to fly across the ocean. Right. And then you're flying and all of a sudden the captain comes on and says, you know, we got a little lazy today. We didn't go through the checklist and oh, the landing gear is not going to work. So you have five minutes to call your family because we're going to crash. No. So that's the same thing. You don't want your audition to crash. So you have to go through the checklist every single time. And uh, otherwise, that's the time, you know, your plane is going to crash. Eventually, after yeah, you've been doing the technique for a while, you can pick up a script and go, OK. I'm going to read it 10 times and now, okay, I'm going to start circling all the, who am I relating to, you know? So, I mean, I think that, that if, if you can get to a place where you're like, okay, what's important, it keeps you outside of the script for a long time. And so then you're not making choices. Yeah. So you really look at the story, really look at the story. I and mean, what I always tell people to do is, you know, then before you, you know, you send in your final tape or, or, or you're going to do your live audition or your Zoom audition is, is, you know, put it on tape and that's when you watch it and you get your checklist. Did I do all those things? Because while you're in the moment, you don't want to be thinking, OK, now I have to do a guideline number this and a guideline number that. You want it all to organically come through you because you've worked, but did the homework. Then you can look at it later and go through the checklist as you're watching. Yeah, like don't edit yourself while you're doing your self-tape or while you're at your audition. A lot of actors do that. They're like, oh, I was supposed to say of instead of the, and then bam, they're out of the script. Yeah. Oh, some coach told me to do this. So I'm not doing it right now. Bam, you're out of the script. You know, what I love about the technique is uh, that you can watch it at after you've done it and assess it in a logical way. And go, you know what? That opening moment, that was weak. Um, am I really seeing the people that I'm talking to? Well, not really. I, so you could fine tune it and go through the guidelines, right? Yeah. And I always suggest step away for it for a while. So you're not in that you know, frame of thought. You step away, make a sandwich or take a walk, then watch it. And you have a clear mind. You can be like, oh, wait a minute. And then you have an opportunity to fix it. Exactly. Yeah. And so then you never need a coach. Yeah. So you, but you get this technique down, then you never need a coach. But it takes years to get the technique down fully. Yes. You know, all we're there is to lead them back to story. What do we do all the time? Bring them back to the story. Bring them back to the guidelines. Bring them back to the story. Bring them back to the guidelines. Bring them back to the story. <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's it. 
Like there's no direction. The direction is I'm directing you back to the story. I'm directing you back to action. It's like, did you read that? You know, person doesn't even realize that. I, like I, I talked to somebody um, in class last night. She sounded so loud. I'm like, aren't you in an interrogation room? And aren't they just right in front of you? Hello, guideline, right? It's price environment will dictate how how your volume is and who am I relating to where they're sitting in the space, you know? Yeah. My God, they're right in front of you. So why are you so damn loud? I think that this technique also is the only one that talks about genre and tone and style. Would you agree? I mean, that's from what I hear, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, which is huge. Now, as a manager, when we follow up, we hear, oh, you know, we loved Tanya or, Ter or Tracy or whatever, but she just wasn't right for the show. And there you go. There she just had right. An easy fix. Mm -hmm. And some people don't even realize the differences in the different types of comedies either. So they'll do one type of comedy in another way and it just doesn't work. It's crazy because there's like five, six, seven different kinds of comedies. I mean, look at the bear. They're saying that that's a comedy. But I, I mean, I honestly think it's in its own little category. The yeah. And you know what I noticed? So people that go off and take other trainings come back and say <clears throat> that the, the linen technique is great because it has everything all in one place, the meat and potatoes, <clears throat> where some of these other techniques and things maybe just focus for weeks and weeks and weeks. The whole thing is based on half of one of our guidelines. Exactly. I actually had somebody say that to me last week. They're like, yeah, this is what this teacher said to me, but they're holding back. They're not giving me all the nuggets. And I said, well, because they don't have 29 years of nuggets. They have one. They have, <laughs> they have maybe five years of nuggets. They gave you everything. They're not holding back. They don't so have anything else to give you. That's what I love about this. And I say, look, <laughs> Amy, through the years, did all the, the homework and the bad stuff and the good stuff for you. She's just handing you the gold mine. The technique <laughs> is all the best of everything that you need. So why take 15, 30 different classes to end up with these 15 things? It's right here. So that's that's one of the greatest things about the linen technique is you, you know, we're in the trenches to find all this out. And here it is. It's just yeah, and I love when somebody comes back after they've cheated on me. <laughs> <laughs> they're, like, they're like, oh, I realized I was booking jobs when I was studying with you. And I'm like, you dumbass. And why did you leave? Like, why would you leave if you're booking jobs, you know? But the technique is not only, oh, I teach you how to book jobs. That's that's not it. You're booking jobs because you're telling a better story in a more specific way. And so all we do, right, Greg, is point them to the specifics. Like you missed yeah, there, you missed that there, you missed that. And I remember last month in the four that I set in on your master classes, I think a consecutive, a consistent a missing guideline was like the story. And then I would say, right, I would say, okay, when Amy, you know, it was all, wasn't all coming together. When Amy just kind of gave you what, you know, an overall of what the story is, guideline number one, everything else fell into place. And crazy, so, all the emotions were there, they're crying, they're, you know, it's crazy. And I think that a lot of people approach a script with an idea and a concept. And oh, a lot of people. A lot of people. Well, I'll play it like this. And how do you know that that's how it's written? And then, oh, but that one line isn't working with the idea that I came up with. Oh, well, you know what? I'll just say that one line because it's just one line. Well, that one line is probably the key line to the whole script. And if you sat on the one line that didn't make sense, it'll probably give you the whole story and unlock everything. Mm-hmm. It's just like the key line is always the line you keep forgetting. It's the line that you don't understand. It's the line that you keep dropping. That's, and that's the reason for the whole reason why you're even in the script of you. Yeah, that's when you verbalize what the whole thing was about. And in, in that character's way, they verbalize that drop the mic moment for whatever the scene is about. Yeah, and that's guideline five. 
Yeah. And let me just say this before I forget, because this is really key. I mean, I always kind of likened it to um, like a detective, right? Some detectives can go in and they can think they solve the case and they usually don't. Then there's the Sherlock Holmes. We're going to need to call Holmes to get Holmes in here. So the Sherlock Holmes people are the Linda Technique people because they get the magnifying glass and they find things and they, you know, do everything forwards and backwards. And then they can say, no, the murder was done over here by a toothpick. And they're like, how did you know that Holmes? Because he has, the, you know, that eye that we want to give actors. Build a magnifying glass to find everything. I love that. I love that. That's a great metaphor and a great story around it because it's absolutely true. And so that's why they're going to yeah. want to hire you, Sherlock Holmes, to solve their case, meaning to book the role that they need to book because of, of, of what uh, what you do. I mean, you, you're finding everything. And I don't think that all of us suffer from reading comprehension. I honestly, I just think that a lot of us just as artists didn't really read that much. Mm -hmm. it's, oh, I love that cup. I am enough. <laughs> okay, pull it out. Pull it out more because it got blurry. Put it. So put it towards you. Put it towards you. All the way towards you. There we go. There we go. So turn it so we can oh, see the side. Let's go. I'm not a good man of white. No, it can't be that close because then it. Yeah. There we go. There we go. I love the peace sign on it. Yeah. You guys go to IamEnoughCollection.com, use the code ENOUGH20, and you get 20% off. I'm wearing the newest shirt. Yeah, it's really cute. It's a hoodie, and it's not a sweatshirt. It's a t-shirt. So IamEnoughCollection.com, and use the code ENOUGH20, and get 20% off. Um. Anyway, back to the technique. So... You know, I, I mean, I, you guys have to understand that I created I Am Enough because I felt that a big portion of why people weren't booking is because they didn't feel powerful. Like you can be a great actor, but you, if you uh, suffer from low self-esteem, you're never going to be able to share all of you. Yeah, and the great thing is, yes, that's like a mantra or something to wear. But the guidelines are also build your self-esteem because you begin to see when you're in class that, oh, I'm actually making right decisions. I'm doing stronger performances. So when you go into your audition in the audition room or you're putting your tape, that confidence comes through you. And so it's like you you just totally let go and you're not so worried about, is this, you know, am I doing this? Not, don't yeah, but I do just... believe that the final frontier is you. Mm -hmm. And I'm talking, I'm not talking about just booking co-stars because what you're talking about is just booking, you know, I'm, I'm talking about having a huge career. Um, and like, if I look at like all the people that are like Nadine Velasquez, Jose Chanchez, if I look at, uh, Corey Stahl, all of, like Adam Brody, all of the people that trained with me, um, they're, they're all filled with self. Now, I think it needs to be selfness, selfness, and not selfishness, having being filled with self, because um, when somebody goes to the movies, they're going to want to see you. Mm -hmm. And it, and uh, they have to put their isms on it. When all yeah. is said and done. I just also want to expand how the guidelines are not only just for booking the role. Yes, they're designed to help you book a role because, as we say, booking a role is a different monster than, you know, when you get the role. However, it translates over into that as well. I mean, we have clients that they 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 book something or they're they're coming back for a couple more episodes because they're reoccurring co-stars or regular. They'll come back and say, oh, I'm on set this day, this day, this day. These are my scenes. We go over them, we lend a technique them, and then when they're on set, I, I forgot who was the last one had said to me, the director came to me and says, I love working with you, you always come prepared, I can shoot your scenes and get it done, and I'm like, that's because we did, you know, we lend a technique. Yeah, together. I love that. I think it, the guideline is, what am I doing? I think when you get the, what am I doing, which is the map to, the linen technique map to booking, when you get that guideline down, that truly is the foundation. So the story and then the what am I doing, which is the really going frame by frame by frame and knowing what you're doing in every moment, that really does give you confidence. Mm -hmm. I mean, the what am I doing came from all those people that would leave an audition and go to their car and say, what the hell was I doing? <laughs> <laughs> That's where that came from. It's because they didn't know, right? Mm -hmm. And so I do think that if you that if you answer all of them, you do have the confidence level. But I do think that in actors inherently are 
broken, which is why we became actors to begin with. But if you can know what you're doing and start getting great feedback, like some girl wrote me the other day, it's the first time that a casting director called her agent. Mm. That's what you're going to start getting. Yes. And you're going to start getting people moving in and saying, why haven't I met you? Or you're going to start getting callbacks. You're going to start getting, you're going to start getting so much on you because they're going to wonder what the hell you're doing. And all you're doing is telling the story where everybody else is doing idea and concept. Yeah. I hear stories from people they'll call after they send it in and they'll say, this is the first time. Oh um, yeah. I've got a million ever yes. ever me to say good job. Yeah, you know, or that they got a call from casting. It's like, well, that's just the way it goes. You do good work. That's what happens. Yeah. Yes, that I hear that a lot too. Um, I, I, you know, my my manager actually wrote to me and said, "Wow." <laughs> so does that mean they hated everything else, or maybe they didn't send it? <laughs> You'll never know. <laughs> that's true. Yeah, and that's that's yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we've been at this, I've been working with you for a long time in London Tink. I don't, there's nothing else I want to do. It just changes so many actors' lives. It opens up their careers. And uh there's nothing better than 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 that. I mean, well, for me, I really enjoy it. And then of course, having connection to the management end of it, which takes it one step farther. I mean, it's just great to see actors' lives change and just their whole beingness change and their dreams coming true, you know, and it all starts. Well, for me, it starts with them. You know, I, 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 that's what I was doing. I was managing and teaching. That's back in the day. And that's and, and most of the reason why I started teaching was because, um, and actually I started managing because this agent was upset I was fixing people's resumes. Did I ever tell you this story? I got a long time ago, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And so um, she says, you're not going to study with Amy anymore, and I'm not going to send you to Amy anymore, and I'll drop you if you study with her, uh, if she touches your resumes. But the agent never fixed their resumes. They looked like crap. It was horrible. And I had such a great manager that taught me everything, you know, before she died, and and she taught me how to put together postcards and, and everything, everything. And then I said, you know what, lady? I'm going to be a manager. I'm going to take your clients. And that's exactly what he did. They all came over to me. Mm -hmm. Every single one of them. And then she went out of business a couple of years later. I, I'm sure it had nothing to do with me. I think it was just karma because she was so mean to me. I had actually had to send a lawyer to do a cease and desist on her. Wow. Well, she was sending emails out. I mean, she was doing uh, libel. Mm. Is it libelous things? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, um, but I decided to keep the management company because we had a good reputation. Client, the few clients that I have are still working, but I needed someone to take the front end because the linen technique is really where I, you know, I'm going to spend 95% of my time. And I, the angels sent, just like the angels sent me you, the angel sent me uh, Jen, who works the, you know, is the day to day of the business. And yeah. I mean, she's an extension of me. Like, I want to be an extension of you. And I think I do a pretty good job of it in my own little way. Yeah. And so it's great because Jen's a, an extension of me. And the, so the management company is really handling itself. And uh, so what I'm do you just, like about managing? Uh, seeing how the work that we do goes on to increase. Uh, you know, it goes on. And so I'll watch TV and I'll see one of our clients or one of my management clients up there. And it's like, you know, I was a part of that whole process. It's just great to see. Yeah, that's really cool to see that 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 you're the one that got them the audition and they did the technique and you coached them on it. And then there they are on TV and you're watching them. That's mm -hmm. a really cool process. Mm -hmm. Or you get a call and they say, oh, my God, like one guy, my God, my life is about to change. Thank you. They're going to ship me off to Australia. I'm now a series regular on this HBO show, you know, change my life forever. It's like, I mean, that's just I don't know. I just that's just where I belong. Yeah, but they have to remember when they get their award, you know, I mean, uh, and or magazine articles, guys. I mean, out of the 56 series regulars, only one person out of all of them actually mentioned my name in a magazine article. Can you believe that? Mm. Well, coaches are the unsung heroes. I think so. <laughs> I think so. It's very upsetting. So if you're listening out there, 
you better say my name or Greg's name when you get your award. They, they should have an Academy Award for Best Acting Coach. That I think so. <laughs> anyway, so uh, let's talk about management for a little bit. Um, sure. I mean, I did it for nine years. You're doing it now. Um, so, I mean, back in the day, I, uh, I we were stuffing envelopes. You guys get to click now. Mm -hmm. but it's a much faster process, isn't it? Yeah, which is a good thing and a bad thing because it opens it up to more people. So the competition is more fair. Whereas back in the day, a little less competition, but more work on the manager's end. But yeah, now it's click, 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 upload, send, click, upload, email. It's like insane. Yeah. I know. We would take uh, three quarters of our day either faxing pictures. Remember faxes? Faxing pictures, stuffing envelopes so the courier could pick it up. Crazy. I well, see, this is kind of where we're different because um, I like to consider us like old school kind of management because we actually develop the clients. We talk to the clients. We, yeah. we, we guide them. It's not just submitting them, you know, on stuff. We we So our process, yes, it's click, 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 but it's also follow-up, calling, you know, pitching, uh, building relationships with um, clients. I need to think how things were different, how things, the submission process was completely different. Yeah, you used to have to send carriers sometimes. Couriers, rather, with the, <laughs> with carriers, the carriers. Uh, to, carriers, carriers. To, to the casting office. It's like insane, yeah. They so, had yeah. baskets at that time, so actors could actually get in front of um, casting directors. You could put your picture in the basket, and they would see it and possibly bring you in. Yeah, it was, it was I, I almost think it was an easier time. Yeah, um, so now it's really reliant upon your performance yes that and a few other surrounding things but at core it's the performance and that's and getting your real in on the earlier side i i think that people are like yeah but i have until this time yeah but they might not get to it yeah well, let me tell you from a manager's standpoint yes sometimes they've already cast the role by the time you send it in because you waited too long but then there's a balance so as a coach i say uh you know get it right don't rush but don't go too quick. So there's that balance when it's just right. And the best thing to do is jump on it right away. You know, a lot of people wait, 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 and then they realize there's more work involved and it takes them longer than they run out of time. And that's a mess. And I understand we all have busy lives and everything, but it's just, you know, shifting and it's priorities. And sometimes you have to say to the kids, mommy or daddy needs this half an hour to study. So, you know, watch whatever on TV or something. But uh, yes, it's important not to wait too long because a lot of times, especially on the smaller role, they've cast it they've moved on they have moved on um and then when the strike ends uh they're they're going to want to go a lot faster on yeah. things it's going to be it's going to be an overwhelming amount of stuff um so people have to be ready I, i've been saying that to people in class i've been saying you guys nobody's going to touch you when you once you get out there because you didn't go on vacation during the strike mm -hmm. no. yeah and a it's lot of looking uh, independent films now um, because they're nice and hot and warmed up, you know? Yeah, and so just uh, two days ago, I coached a client and I hadn't seen her in a while and and she had said, well, you know, because of the strike and everything, I, you know, haven't really been practicing or anything. She said, I'm a little rusty. She was horrible. We needed to oil and grease everything. Uh, you don't want to be that way when the strike is over. You want to have things moving. So already prepped and ready to go instead of now starting from that moment and you're going to have some rusty auditions so um that's why people that are in class now i mean it's just great because when the time comes your engine's revved and you're ready to go to jump out the gate you don't have a ramp up time yeah and you know i can't stress enough that it's really important that you don't send in anything that you're not proud of I mm -hmm. Don't put Drek out there, guys. And even that goes for your online packages, too. If there's a clip or anything that you have that you're not proud of, take it down. Just take mm -hmm. it down. If there's a photo that you hate, but your reps love, take it down. The energy of your package has to match the energy of you feeling strong and powerful and uh, absolutely loving everything that you put out there into the universe uh yeah i mean don't you agree with that yeah i mean you have to like what's out there otherwise the energy attached to it's not going to be of a positive nature and and people sense that when it's out there and, and if you for some reason don't like it there's a reason and so other people may, will encounter that same reason as well so you got to go with your gut feeling 
Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, what if somebody looks at a, a tape of yours that you did, what I usually say BA before Amy, <laughs> and that you were just not amazing? Like, why would that still be on your profile? Because they're going to possibly, let's say your manager is just going to send that clip with something, and they're going to watch that, and that's their impression of you. Not the you that is a stronger actor or a more brilliant uh, self-taper or a, a much better storyteller. You know, that's not what they're going to see. They're going to make an assessment of you and then say, you know what, they're too green or they're too this or they're too that. You know what else is great, though, about the, the way you're handling doing the master classes now is you have the people uh, stand up and perform it like it's being a self-tape. Yeah. So get used to how, you know, the space, using the space and how, you know, never do this and you shouldn't do that. You know, this is how you handle driving a car, all that stuff. So they're learning how to do this stuff in class so they don't make the mistakes when they send a taping because a lot of people don't know what they don't know. And so to take the experience of you and I, all the years that we've, we've learned these things, you know, you can find out that about them in the master class because you actually have them do it as it is an audition. Yeah, it's also learning how to use space, you know, um, what works, what doesn't work. Some girl came in and used a, it was supposed to be a folder, but she used a big bulky white book. notebook. And I've seen that a lot. They bring in these books and it's like, yeah. Oh. It's like it takes up a quarter of the frame and like all I'm focusing on is that if you're going to decide to use any kind of prop, then you better shoot it before you shoot yourself tape. All the action that you're going to do with the supposed props that you're going to use and see if you're distracted by it. That could like kick you out of the running. Yeah, you should definitely choreograph it. Uh, uh, what I call like a self zoom before you tape it. It's yes. Follow up zoom. So now you have a frame and you can say, okay, how am I going to handle this? Well, if I do this or if I do this, or, you know, I'm going to do it this way. So I don't block my, so you can practice it and see it so that when you actually incorporate it in the scene, when you're not looking at yourself, you know exactly how you're going to do your movements. Yeah. Yeah. And that goes under the guideline. What am I doing? Um, and and, it, and the whole choreography of it, it's like, I said to somebody, um, did you practice sitting down? They said, yeah. I said, well, why would you practice sitting down if your scene is standing up? Like you can't stand up for the first time to go do a self tape. You can't figure out where everybody is in the frame on the moment that you're self taping. That you shouldn't. The only thing you should be thinking about is your feelings. It's the only. Yeah. So you should. Yeah. So what I always suggest is to incorporate the, the actions and those things from the very beginning. So it becomes part of the body memory. So it's not something in your brain memory as you're performing it. It's all incorporated and glued in with the lines and the emotions. So yes. it just happens naturally. You don't have to think about what you're doing. Your body automatically does it. So even if you zone out during a live audition, your body has it all. And, and you go, it. Yeah. what did I do? And you actually find out, oh, I booked the role. And it's like, I don't remember doing any of that stuff. Yeah. So incorporate it from the very beginning, glue it in with the emotions, the lines, the choreography. Yeah, get up, and move it around, have it in, uh, deal with your space, deal with your emotion, deal with the physicality, mm -hmm. you know? And, you know, there's also so many, like, physical scenes. I, I give a lot of physical scenes in class, you know? So do I do to see if they, like, to teach and to, so they can understand what to do, what not to do, and how to do what I do, and if I can't do it, how to incorporate it into my dialogue. So yeah. I'll throw, like, heavy oh, yeah. heavy action scenes where they'll say, I just don't know what to do. I'll get calls. Like, can you coach me on this? I have all this stuff. I don't know what to do. Okay, fine. They send me the script, and I just go, no, no, yes, yes. Sir. They come in, and I do, they go, that's that's all I have to do. Yeah, that's all you have to do. That's all that matters. Oh. I mean, let me explain the guideline on action. If it distracts you, don't do it. If it distracts me, don't do it. If it helps lift the scene to tell a better story, do it. That's it. But if you're drinking bourbon and you show me an Evian bottle, I'm going to go over there and punch you. What is wrong with you? <laughs> That's funny. You a lot of How are you going to sell that? How is that going to, I mean, you guys, you're selling something to me. Sell it to me. I'm the buyer. Sell it to me. If you're not going to sell it to me, then I'm not going to buy you and you're not going to get the job. Hmm. Like, be careful how you're selling things. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I do that to give a lot of, uh, action season one of action mm -hmm. yeah and that's why the whole thing with the um moving around in space in the class it is like a 
master on camera self tape class almost. Yeah, because like when they'll when a newer actor, let's say to it, will do something, you say, no, don't do that. So you just learn something in five seconds what not to do. That may take you a while of not getting uh, getting parts because you're doing this over and over again. Amy and I will tell you right off the bat, you don't do that. This is how you handle that. In five seconds, you get a lot that would take you a lot of time to to learn through trial and error. Yeah, I mean, I had a guy come in and um, I'm like, this is a walk talk scene. So come in from the side, already talking, you know, if you walk, talk, and then you're landing. So then he lands at a body, a dead body. He didn't even talk about the dead body. It's like, it says the guy pulls the, the tarp off of the body and then talks about the body. Well, said, you, have to, you have to see the body. You, you have gotta to see, see the it. body. I'm yeah. like, this is a three-person scene, even though one of them is dead. <laughs> yeah, so that's what's great about the master class. You get instantaneous feedback. And so you learn so much by the mistakes or the thing or things that you do, but also by watching the other people, because you get a whole plethora of different types of scenes and people making different mistakes or doing things that you do. And then you 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 learn so much just within just by watching even yeah and i'm like i'm like if you're making this mistake and you're in the master class can you imagine your competition and mm -hmm. even to look at and this is for you guys out there too um to look at how you were three months ago or five months ago to how you are now and see your growth i think it's really important to chart your growth because mm -hmm. we i i know that as an actor too i used to always ask my manager so did they call and she'd be like Amy, you just had the audition two days ago. It felt like 10 days ago. It felt like a month ago. And so you always like, like you want everything now, you know? It's crazy. Just mm -hmm. crazy. Yeah, and that's the, the, the unfortunate part of this business is that, well, it also happens in, in audition, um, in uh, job interviews in the regular and the non-entertainment world, you know, you go for a job interview, you think you did great, you think you did bad or whatever, and you never hear anything. They never, until maybe you find out that the role was filled. Sometimes they'll tell you we filled it with something, but you never get any feedback. And that's a lot in this industry too, right? You, you pour your heart but into that's something. That's exactly the feedback you needs to be yourself looking at how much you've grown. If you don't have a charting progress report for yourself, how are you gonna feel like you're not spinning? Because all of us want something now. But what about the process? Why can't everybody just enjoy the process? Well, that's what I'm trying to say is we end up focusing on the fact that I haven't heard anything, I haven't booked anything, I must, maybe I'm not good for this, maybe I shouldn't do this business. When you don't know what's happening on the other end, you turned in good work, you're too short, you're too tall, for whatever reasons, you never get any feedback. So the only feedback that you can get, of course, is in the, in the class, and or when you learn what what is, is with yourself. So when you chart your progress, you say, wow, I really sucked back then. And look how good I'm doing now. That's really all you have. But you know what? That's really all you need. I think so, too. The rest of it's nice. It's great to have all that happen. People say, oh, that was a great job. It really job. helps your self-esteem, you know? Like, I remember when I started um, uh, back at yoga five months ago. Now, I, I like, I need, like, the next level now. I am really stretched out. I am really flexible now. Stuff that I couldn't do four mm -hmm. months ago. Well, to see, and then as I'm going into it, I'm like, oh, wow. Yeah, but you focused on the pain, that, the pain that you have for what you're trying to accomplish and forgot about those things that you weren't able to do before that you could do now with ease. You would think, oh, I'm, I suck at yoga when actually, well, I really come a long way because now I can do the 59 position and the 27 position rather before. Yeah. I and so now you're learning more, yeah. So yeah, and it helps you to, to keep going because if you keep getting the the rejection or no no comment, you know, how do you keep going? What do you gauge it on? Then then what happens? I hear is you know I have a friend who booked a role and it's like, well, you don't know what's going no. on. No, yeah, I hate that. You don't you know don't... the story of their journey. Yeah, yeah. I think the hardest thing to do is to look at other people, you know, I do that sometimes I'll look at other people's Instagrams and feel like, oh gosh, they just feel like they're so much further along than me. Well, you don't know their story. Maybe that's all they've been doing for three years. Like you don't know that. I mean, the best you can do is study with 
real stuff and you know linen techniques i can definitely vouch for that um is study keep the juices going turn in really good work every single time if you do that i mean i've have many stories from the management level and in the, in the coaching level where people have done an audition. They did a really good job. They didn't get it. They'll see the show or the movie and they'll see the person who got it. And either they'll agree or disagree that they, the, they did better or whatever. Um, but then they'll get a call or book a role later on that they found out was because of the audition that they did previously. Yeah. So all you should do is just focus on your growth, focus on where you are, how far you've come and that you're going to give every audition the best that you can and then that's that's really all you can do and it all just kind of comes back to you and chart your passion level too you know i mean look look at me i have uh, almost 120 some odd imdb credits um and that's not even counting like 40 other movies that they didn't even post okay i do it because i love it i don't do it sit there and count the money or think about anything like that if i'm still out there doing it because I love it, then why aren't you guys? Why do you keep looking at the result? Stay in the process and go be an actor. Go enjoy being an actor, but be the best. Be the most brilliant actor in the world. And I believe that that's what the technique does. I believe the technique turns out brilliant actors. I mm -hmm. truly do. Because the brilliance is in the specifics. So if we're, if you and I are continually teaching how to find the specifics, like Sherlock Holmes, like you were saying before, then why wouldn't you be brilliant? It's just almost impossible. You're right. No, you're right. Because the, 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 there's that level a little lower than booking is where, you know, you did a great job. They considered you, but somebody else took the role. And that's where we come in because we give you the tools to beat out those other suckers. Yeah, you need to be at no question. You can't even just be amazingly brilliant. You have to be at no question, meaning there's no question. And you know what I noticed, like with uh, Henry, you know, Henry, um, yeah. he booked this really huge role because there was one guideline that he really hit really strong in the audition. Okay. Transitions? It was uh, it, no, it was, um, yeah, it was, in, it was in the transition. Right. So um, what happened, we did, I said, you know, listen, dude, this is like key because in the beginning of this transition is your key line. So there has to be this whole, don't do like other actors are going to do. They're just going to just like go right into it and walk right over it. So we really worked on that moment, put all the different guidelines in there. So then when he got the role, his um, uh, um, agent had called and said, he got the role because there was this one moment in his audition. Yes, right. It was that moment. Good job. And he, and he did study. He has is one of your regular was you know has studied with you and was coming in for the coaching. But you know he did everything. But that one at that particular moment in time, he didn't grasp as much as he could have. And so we put it in there, and that's what booked the role for him. So what I always say in class is the fifteen volumes are all important, but depending on the scene, some of them raise in their importance than others yeah depending on the scene i agree right. because there's, like, there's, like there's some you, can, you can language it too you could say this is definitely a relationship scene or this is definitely a point of view scene this is definitely a character scene you know the but let's talk about transitions for a second because i believe that if your transitions are not strong we're not going to see character oh if your transitions character. are strong, you're just it's 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 flavorless yeah it's nothing the 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 character is in the transitions. And so everybody should not be afraid to hit their transitions. I mean, just look in life on how dramatic all of us are. We're also freaking dramatic. Well, those are transitions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's interesting because there is one guideline about finding your transitions. But what, what you come to understand and studying is that some of the other guidelines um, actually help you with the transitions, even though it's not specifically for a transition, but if you have this one, this, this one in there, it really adds meat to that transitional moment. Yeah, I agree. I, I do think that when you're doing the guidelines for a long time, they they all actually, you, you start to see the pattern, but you have to almost be doing it a long time to go, oh, I see how that guideline is related. Like, why am I in the script is related to your key line, you know? Yeah, but and it's actually because eight to five, you know. Sometimes the why am I in the script uh, doesn't get as much 
loves and needs because I there are some, right, and there are some scenes where there's one scene I, that I, I give in class on purpose. I don't want to say what it is because in case anybody watching this is taking a class, I want to give them a clue. There is a scene <laughs> where it takes place somewhere blank that while you're in the scene is the most important guideline so that if you don't really truly understand that and swing all the way through with it, all the other stuff that you do doesn't work. And so 99% of the time when they come into class, we'll do that scene. I love how you have trap scenes. I have trap scenes. Yeah, too. and they don't and they don't know. And I say, well, how was that? It was funny. I said, you want to watch it be funnier? Yeah, what do I do? It's very simple. Let's look at why you're in the script. And they say, well, I'm in the script. So I said, why are you in the script? And then they look for, oh, okay. I don't want to give it away. But then no, when they finally that. say it, then they go, oh, so I'm supposed, yeah. So yeah. Like, <laughs> and when they do that, it's hysterical. It goes from being funny to funny. hysterical. It goes from, I ah, did a good job. He knows comedy to book that guy. And if it's not in this role, it's another one he knows comedy. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I have trap scenes. Everybody gets trap scenes. And I always tell people at the beginning of the class, I love you. I want you to grow. I'm looking for progression, not for perfection. And I'm going to do things to make you fail. So I'm going to trap you. We're going to figure out what it is. You're going to fix it. Yeah, I mean, the practice is always going to be harder than the game. That is for damn sure. Do you know what I noticed? I noticed a lot of people write um, uh, what the scene's about in their point of view. And I think that's an old dinosaur leftover from the... Stanislavski Strasberg days and that mean, is, writing uh, what the scene is what the scene is about when they, instead of in guideline one is what is the scene about right and then you can usually find it with what two people are talking about and the, the subject and that's the scene about but what they usually do is they write down their point of view of what they think the scene is about but that's not what the other person is talking about it has to be about one subject that both people are talking about and then you link it into a point of view. You have your point of view, they have your their point of view, and then the editor cuts it together and creates the conflict. So it's it's just crazy. I think that that they need to revamp all of uh, the approach to all these acting old antiquated acting terms to the linen technique. Tell you the truth, that's mm -hmm. all. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I truly feel that way because I think that that. They're not, a, they're teaching old terms like beats and intention when who the hell cares? I mean, when you're in a fight with somebody, do you care about, uh, are you actually listening? No, you're listening from your point of view. So you're not actually listening. So why should you get into what you want? When you're, yeah, that's fight, what you're not into what do I want? You're into how can I beat your ass? Well, and what I want comes later with another with other guidelines. We do address that. But in the very beginning, guideline number one, the whole basis of it is, is to look at it from a writer's standpoint, not from the actor. I'm going to play this role. Play no, it's why does the scene even exist? What is, you know, what is the purpose of the scene? Why is the scene even here? So I'm going to look at it from a macrocosm. Yeah, and so what is everybody talking about? The big thing, not like <laughs> this one or that one. It's like, in general, what is really happening here with these, these people in general? Yeah. And yeah. then... As the guidelines go in, you start to work, chop it down, and then start getting into the smaller. But guideline one has to be, you know, what the hell is the whole thing going on? What's it all exactly. about? Exactly. And what's the subject? What is then this? We, then we deal with your point of view later on, your point of view as that character. But it doesn't Yeah, like later, there. like way later. I, you know? I think once you've broken down the scene, which is why I think uh, most people suffer at this, that they don't know how to break down a scene, and this will teach you how it gives you a template a map so once you break down your scene uh then you can go then, then it basically plays itself mm -hmm. you just jump in it plays itself once you relate to it so there's the scene there's the character and then there's you but stop thinking about the c which is the result do the a plus b just do the a plus b stop worrying about the result you will be absolutely perfect when you get it down. And the funny thing is, is that people, they make it harder than it has to be. So mm -hmm. in class for the newer people, I let them squirm and roll over the floor. And then I say, take a breath. What? You're overthinking it. It's very simple. Watch it. Oh my God. That's yes. It's just all right there. I know. And the, their comment is, is like, oh my God, this is so simple. Yes. It's simple in the understanding. It's mm -hmm. hard in the application. 
Exactly. Because Where does all the brain that? won't let it just be that? What you're mm -hmm. reading is just what it is. Like, why does it have to be anything more? Like everybody's bringing the kitchen sink in. I'm like, if you can show me somewhere in where, where that's written, I'll let you have it. Yeah. And of course, what we do in the class is, yeah, we figure out what that is, but then we help them figure out how to find the hard part is where does it sit for me? How can I relate to that? You know, I think that is the hardest part. And that's how, why you need to know yourself a lot. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because if you can't relate it back to you, then it's going to be in your head and there's no way you can play it. So most of your time needs to be spent finding that. Yeah, and you do that. We well, I, I'm can only I'm gonna speak for you, Mike. Speak for myself. I mean, you do that a lot when I when I watch you doing the master class. Is it, a lot more time is spent on that part of it than the surface part because that's the easy part. Yeah, well, it can be easy if you don't overthink it. So take your attention off of that and put it into where it really counts. In you know, how does it sit for me? How can I bring life? to that guideline or to what's happening in the scene at that moment. Yeah, you know that. that's what makes it that's what makes it unique is because nobody shares your DNA. There's there's only one you. So uh, you're going to spin it out how you're going to spin it out, but at least tell the right story. Yeah, I mean there's the two twins that were in class and they come for private coaching, identical twins to this day unless they were different t-shirts when they come into work. I don't know who's who. So I always say you always wear the blue and you always wear the pink so I know who but they'll get the same audition and they'll come in for coaching and I'll coach them both the same way. But every, but the tape tapes for the two girls always come out different. It's just their isness happens. And as a coach, my job is to, you know, get the technical stuff in there, have the connection, all that there, but they bring that. I step away from that. I don't try to, you know, cookie cut it, but it's interesting because there's a perfect example of look the same, sound the same, Came from the same womb, the same moment. Isn't that crazy? It's two different yeah. It, well, it's because the, in the final analysis, when people tune in to a TV show, they want to see a particular kind of person. Like, I go, oh my God, that person's in that show. I'm going to watch that show because of that person. So if you don't know what you're bringing, then why would I spend money on you? Yeah, there's two shows I don't want to get into it but there's two shows that are out have the same name one's an older version one's a newer version and uh i love the older version because i love the actors because they're doing such a good job i get totally sucked the other one it's too stylized and everybody's too oh god it's directed and too yeah, it's ruined. It's ruined. yeah. But so I, I watch the other one and my roommate watches both of them and i don't even watch the other one because i'm not interested in those people the actors i'm not interested in the actors they're just not they're not pulling me in exactly and they're not pulling you in because they're not invested and that's what happens with casting before yeah. it even gets to the producers to look at you if you don't pull the casting director they're not going to put their reputation on the line and i think a lot of people come at it like well how can i pull them in you know how you pull them in guys i'm going to tell you that how you pull them in tell the great fucking story and mm -hmm. show up and scene that's it but I've had people, how to break down a damn script. And I've had people ask me, what can I do so they remember me? And I say the same thing. Just tell a great story. Do a great job. That's how they'll remember you in a positive way. They'll remember you in a bad way. Yeah, remember that guy that was doing? Yeah. Yeah. So that's that's the way to do it is just stay focused on what you're doing. Do a great job. Tell the best story. And it'll happen for you at the right time i love this i'm so happy yeah and listen anybody that's part of the linen technique it's a family we all take care of each other it's a, it's a safe environment people expose them well they expose their weaknesses <laughs> in class and in, in class because it's a loving and learning place that's why i always say when i get new i say welcome to the linen technique family because we we're all like that and it's a people start to relate to each other become friends and support each other yeah i and, love how everybody chats with each other in the chat you know i love the that. hard thing to do is to tape and get guidance from another actor who's not taking the linen technique when you do your tape. Yeah, yeah. They, you know, um, they tell me all the time when somebody asks them to read for them, they said it's the hardest thing. They don't even want to do it anymore because they miss everything. Like when they're reading for somebody that's never trained in the technique. Oh, yeah, when they're reading. But also yeah. when you have somebody reading for you and doing the tape, that actor who's not linen technique trained will try to give you advice and guidance. No, just say, just tape me, just read. I yeah, know. yeah. Make sure you do that because you're already 
well beyond anything that they could tell you. That's for sure. So Gregory, yes, my dear. People find you. Um, well, you can uh, you can you want me to get my phone number and well, how can they find you if they want to? Oh, you can you yeah, you can e you can you can email me at greg at actingandbookingcoach.com. That's the best way to go. You can okay do that. That's the best way to do it because I'm seeing them all the time and I'll respond relatively quickly and get you set up, answer your questions. I'll do a a, a, com, a call with you so you can ask more specific questions and we'll we'll, we'll work it out for you. So you can Yeah, and you guys make sure that you say that um that you listen to this podcast and and you that's how you got to know Greg. Mm -hmm. Um and for all of you guys, make sure you DM me um on Instagram. Follow me on Instagram. I'll give you a promo code to the Udemy course that you could do at your house or if you're interested in classes, just go to the lindentechnique.com and sign up for the intensive because that's the qualifier. And uh and if you're not ready for the master class, you're going to go to Greg. Yeah, and, the, and 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 you have sent me some people who've been in the master class, but just want to get pushed. Yeah, they're doing both classes actually. Yeah, so they hear yeah. it in a different way, and it seems to you know work for some for some people too. Yeah, <laughs> because what Greg does is, uh, he he breaks down the technique in a a small class, like of two people, four people at the most, and so you're getting like private coaching, like full on private coaching, really. Mm -hmm. whereas with me it's like um no no you're not ready okay end of the line go in the end of the line I'll get back to you after I get through everybody and then you get a chance to try it again but I, I'm not there like that it's a master class it's too fast you know um but if you're ready I'd love to have you but if you're not Greg would love to have you and I'll get you ready I'd right love to have you so yeah, and then I'll get you ready. You're going to Amy's master class. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. But, and I strongly suggest to join these ancillary 24-7 access to Amy's different programs that she has out there because I'll have people that are taking class with me, but then they'll they'll watch some of the auditions that you have in the in the Yeah, the actress toolbox.net, right. actress toolbox.net. And they'll say, I saw her do this and she was saying that. Can you explain that a little bit more in detail to me? Yeah. So I'll explain it to yeah. So it all kind of ties in together. Yeah, there's 130 teaching videos on there. And it's twenty percent. You get a free week. You get a free week on that site, so you could watch some videos. And you guys, knowledge is power. Just keep watching stuff. Just keep watching stuff. Mm -hmm. um, uh, get the book on Amazon. Get the audio book, which is the advanced version of the book, on Audible. And um, and we're here for you. And if you have a need coaching, uh, contact Greg. Uh, if you're not doing the technique, if you're in the master class and you're doing well, then I'll coach you. But if you're in the master class and you're inconsistent, I'm not going to coach you. Yeah, and if you are not in any of the classes, but you do have an audition, you can still reach out to me because my job during that period of time is not to so much teach you the guidelines, but to make sure they're all there. Yeah, that's so true. It's a different focus. It's just making sure all the stuff is there. So when your tape is done, it's locked tight with all 15 guidelines. So yeah. that's so don't be afraid to come to coaching if you haven't in any class. It's it's just a different focus. Yeah. Well, and it's so great to 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 talk to you, uh, you know, like Yeah, this. I'm so happy. I mean, I when you came to class, I was like, we have to sit down and just, you know, shoot the shit about the guidelines a little bit. You know, you guys, we didn't cover all of them. We only covered maybe seven of them or six of them. Um, but it was really fun to just talk about them with you. Yeah, it was great when you said that. I thought, why haven't we done that before? Right? We should. Yeah. You know, oh. <laughs> everything, everything at the right time. Well, great to see you. And uh, any so last happy. minute question before we go? No, I just love you so much. And thank you so much for taking care of this technique the way that you do and being such an amazing teacher. My pleasure, my dear. My pl My honor. I just... I get out of it as much as as much as I give, I get double back from from. Yeah, it is that, isn't it? It's so yeah. rewarding. It really is. I love you. I love you guys. Uh, make sure you subscribe. <laughs> I hope you love this as much as I love doing this for you. Stop worrying about the other guys. They should be worried about you. You want to be hot. Become a booking machine. So hit like, make a comment, and subscribe. Share it with a friend.